We're getting lots of questions and we always do just about more specifically how you recommend people use mushrooms. I think people are very eager to learn more about you know, how they can incorporate mushrooms into their own lives. So we have questions around tinctures versus capsules. Hopefully you can address that. We also have questions, um, I, I think I asked this before, but combining psilocybin with other types of mushrooms or with vitamin B. Um, so maybe let's just start with those. And folks, if, if I missed your question before, drop it into the chat again. We're doing our best to get through them all, but unfortunately, you know, we have limited time, so we'll just, we'll do our best. Well, what's consistent with uh, traditional Chinese medicine is taking one to five uh, dry grounds uh, per day. As a general, you know, umbrella that, you know, has, covers a lot of territory. Okay, that's, um, but the um, tinctures um, are extracted. Now, beta-glucans are water-soluble, um, but many of the uh, other polyphenols and lipids obviously are not. Everyone knows that lipids, fats are not soluble in water. Um, and they separate out. So when you do uh, hot water extraction of mushrooms, you're just getting a partitioning the water soluble compounds. The non water soluble compounds, the polyphenols, lipids, and some of the triterpenoids that are more soluble in alcohol and more soluble uh, in the non polar solvents, um, water is the most polar solvents. When you do an extraction, you should be very careful because you can partition out one group of constituents that is beneficial more so uh, than another, depending on what your target is. So when people ask me, what's the best mushrooms to take? What is your target? What is your intention? Is it inflammation? Is it neurogenesis? Is it general homeostasis? Is it for your microbiome? You know, it's very, very, you know, you have to be careful about how you answer these questions. And having a complex mix allows your body to be able to absorb that, which is the most useful. So um, the lion's mane, for instance, uh, let's look at the mushrooms versus mushroom mycelium and then get into microdosing with vitamin B. Um, with lion's mane, the research, and we have repeated this, it's also at mushroomreferences.com. It turns out that the fruit body extracts reduce neuroregeneration below the baseline. Uh, that's the take home message. The extracts of the fruit bodies of lion's mane, Hericium arenaceus, that contain arisinones, the mycelium has arenaceins. The mycelium of arenaceins increases neurogenesis substantially, very well documented. And the fruit body extracts reduce neurogenesis, even so far that it's been suggested that the fruit body extract be a, as a possible treatment for glioblastoma, which is brain cancer. You want to slow the brain cancer from growing so a fruit party extract of lion's mane will reduce neurogenesis. Well, you carry this further, most of us want to rebuild our neurons, not degenerate them. So is a fruit body extract better for neurogenesis than the mycelium? Absolutely not. All the evidence points to the fact that mycelium is far better. So there's all this noise, especially from Chinese producers or sellers of Chinese mushrooms, that's beta-glucans and only mushrooms and only the Chinese can grow medicinal mushrooms of any quality. It's poppycock. You know, it's like, it's, it's such old science. What the mycelium does, it has extracellular metabolites that are being expressed. So the mycelium is growing in the ground for weeks, months, sometimes years. Think of this one thread of mycelium surrounded by whole, many millions of hungry microbes, many of which want to consume the mycelium. But it is only innate immune system upregulates antibodies to be able to set up a microbiome so it can navigate through a complex, potentially hostile ecosystem. One cell thick and up to many miles per cubic inch in the, in, in the ground. Well, a mushroom forms after many trillions of cell divisions, weeks, months later, and a mushroom forms and rots in five days. What has a better immune system? A mushroom that rots in five days or the mycelium that's in the ground that's navigating in a hostile environment for months or years. Mushrooms are nutritionally dense and they're designed to attract microvores, animals in many cases for the edible mushrooms, insects. Many of the poisonous mushrooms can uh, attract insects. They're part of the food chain. 
They're nutritionally dense. So the mycelium has an innate immune system that we can benefit from. And from these extracellular metabolites, and you can go to penicillin molds. Uh, the penicillin is extracellular metabolite coming from penicillin, and that is a very powerful antibiotic. It, my penicillin mold is protecting itself from staph bacteria. Well, from these immunological protections that the mycelium has evolved, we can benefit from the immune system of mycelium. Now, there's, there's an enormous amount of literature out on beta-glucans, but a group of scientists, we got a, a $2.1 million breast cancer clinical study funded by NIH. Uh, we were the sole source supplier. Five other companies were, were juried and we came out number one. We had an excellent chain of custody. Statistically significance and immune readiness uh, enhancement of these breast cancer patients. Um, but what's so interesting in the research, we were all hung up on beta-glucans. I said, beta-glucans is a giant scaffolding. And these other compounds that are not water soluble are embedded within the scaffolding. And so I was finally, my voice was heard, and a group of physicians and researchers then used lipases, which is our enzyme stripped lipids from the beta-glucans. And so when they took the beta-glucan complexes, they add lipases to strip the lipids. Then that beta-glucan was, I think, 87% less potent in stimulating an immune response. So this is where science gets better, Mycelium has just recently, in the past 100 years, been cultivated. Mushrooms have been consumed for tens of thousands, millions of years. But as science evolves, we have new understandings, techniques. We now have a new form, in a sense, of mushrooms. Mushrooms are compacted mycelium. And all you people out there who are culturing know this. You take a piece of a mushroom, you put it on a petri dish, it's mycelium. You know, that's it immediately. I mean... So mushrooms are just laminated mycelium that are compacted together. The mycelium is, you know, an extensive network that is then producing these self-defenses that can help. So anyhow, so the extracts um, are quickly absorbed in the mucosa of the mouth, active macrophages. So they're very, very quick for absorption. Uh, then when you take the capsules, there's a delayed response. The tremendous immune response in your gut. Some people say up to 85% of your immune receptors are in your gut. And that a lot of it has to do with detecting whether you consume the pathogen. And so your body wants to know if you consume something that's dangerous so it can create an immune response. Beta glucans do not get into your bloodstream. Lipids and these other compounds do. They're fat soluble. The cell walls are made of fat. And so the permeability factors of these polyphenols and lipids. And so, so much of our research has been focusing on these non-beta-glucan-like compounds because beta-glucans are a false flag. And then this other poppycock concept that, oh, the mycelium grown on rice is all starch. Well, that's like saying, uh, it, it's like saying that yogurt is just milk. No, it's a fermented product. So we published in two peer-reviewed journals, you can look it up at mushroomreferences.com, uh, showing clearly looking at rice without any mycelium, look at mycelium, and looking at my, mycelium that's fermented the rice, tremendous immune simulation from the fermented substrate. So yogurt is, is fermented milk. Mycelium grown on grain is fermented grain. We now can see clearly different immunological responses, especially in the ex excitation of interleukin 10s and interleukin 1RAs. These are anti-inflammatory uh, interleukins or cytokines that is especially good for modulating the immune system and preventing the cytokine storm. Uh, this is where a lot of our research now is very exciting uh, because we can enhance immunity without causing overexpression of these inflammatory cytokines that uh, lead to, to uh, lead to the cytokine storm. So IL-10, IL-1 are upregulate them, but they're anti-inflammatory uh, uh, interleukins. So Daniel, that is again what I use a lot as an anti as a spray made of mycelium is water and alcohol. So it's both of those constituents coming together. They're not exclusive. I think when you start excluding these things, you started getting away from the, the advantage of natural substances. We didn't grow up consuming one molecule. We grew up and evolved consuming complex foods. 
and mushrooms offer the complexity of ingredients that then our bodies can then select out uh, that which is most importantly needed. We can verify them, we can make them more potent, not about that. Um, but again, I ask you, what is your target? If you know if you target specificity, then we can pull out very good solvent methods that we can pull out the group of constituents that address that particular target very well. If it's homeostasis and general immune readiness, uh, then you know, getting rid of some of these beneficial compounds through hot water extraction, you end up throwing away or not solubilizing many of these constituents that are otherwise very beneficial.